Welcome to the first episode of Ask Toby D. Uh, write uh, questions in the comments below and they will be answered uh, from me in the next episode of Ask Toby D. The first question from uh, Matty Mazek. I don't know, I'm super bad with names. <laughs> How to improve double bass uh, pedal technique and which is recommended. I I checked them out, or I checked out every um, double bass technique in the game. And for me, the most uh, useful uh, is the ankle motion. So you're just using your ankle and not the whole foot. And, uh, um, most of the top guys are playing this technique. Aaron Spears, you can see that on his uh, DVD. And then uh, Mario Duplantier, Tony Royce Jr., uh, Krim, Alex Rudinger, Travis Orban, uh, and the, the, the list goes on and on. Um, yeah, they're just using the ankle because it's the, the most uh, precise system to use uh, with your legs. And uh, how to improve? The first step would be playing or to, to uh, improve your left foot. So I recommend playing groove uh, music, like putting on headphones and uh, some ACDC or Michael Jackson tracks and playing them with your left foot. So your foot and uh, brain connection, the uh, neurons, they connect. So. If you want to do a hit, your foot actually does uh, the hit at the uh, time you want it to do. So that's the first thing, play everything on the left, simple stuff. And then um, you take it from there, like separating the feet, uh, the feet just the right foot, like doing with the right, then with the left. and. Uh, the next step would be uh, the the right foot, just the right foot, like continuous, like do 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 do, and then incorporating um, as you're going the left, and uh, that's the way to go. You have to lead with your right foot. That's the first steps for you guys. Second question: Matt Joven drums. Would love to know about what program you use to create your content, mics, software, and uh, everything else. Um, for audio recording, I use uh, Logic Pro X. Um, I think that's really intuitive, the programs from Apple. Uh, and for the video stuff, I use um, Final Cut Pro X. Uh, they are um, education purposes if you're a student or a teacher you can get this from the educating uh, store for like 230 bucks and that's super cheap when it comes to programs and they are great i uh, only work with them they're really intuitive uh, and you progress fast uh, in the workflow uh, mics i uh, use sure microphones um, yeah, I mean, they're like uh, the standard for years in recording and especially for snare drum mics and uh, I think for the kick drum mics as well. Uh, I will give you a quick rundown uh, for kick drum. We have the Beta 91 inside of the kick drum, the Beta 52A on the, on the outside, the snare is a Beta 57. Uh, and a KSM-137. The toms are all small diaphragm um, microphones, the uh, KSM-137. And the overheads are um, Beta-27. Mm. And we did a, a huge shootout with Shure. Sure, they uh, sent over a lot of mics and we compared them back in the days. And this is a setup I... Uh, yeah. I fell in love with. For uh, guitars I use Kemper amps because I'm, um, I've am i played guitar for a long time but I'm not uh, exactly or I uh, haven't found my sound yet like I did with the drums. 
So this is a great way to being flexible uh, over the next period of time and, and evolve as a player. And one day I have my sound, I hope. Till then, I'm, I'm yeah, camper is the way to go. Christo, <laughs> stimmt, ey. Giftajik says, hi, dude. Hey. Right, cool, that would probably be the... Ah, uh, what sticks I use? I use uh, the Vic Worth Rock model. Uh, they are a little bit thicker than the 5Bs and a little bit heavier. Uh, previously, I used the Vic Worth uh, X55B. They are like, exactly like the 5B, a little bit longer. They were great as well, but I like a little uh, heavier sticks right now. And uh, I like them to be a little shorter as well. Yeah, so big worth rock. Groove versus speed. I think both are really, really important. And I um, um, advise to my students all the time to practice both equally. Uh, in my 21 years of uh, drumming, I spent uh, like 15 years developing uh, 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 technique and groove playing and, and the, the normal stuff. And from that point on, I uh, played a lot of double bass drums and, and speed stuff. So I added this later. Um, but yeah, groove playing is always a big part. Like jamming uh, uh, in practice sessions, jamming to tracks. It's really important to, to adopt the feel of the uh, tracks. Um, like uh, playing ACDC stuff, Michael Jackson and, and all those uh, groove oriented uh, kind of things. It depends from time to time. There are times where I only focus on speed and I play one to three hours, uh, one to two hours double bass, like the Mario Duplantier stuff. Like putting on a um, metronome and the timer, one hour to go, and then you are just and, and drinking and coffee or stuff. And yeah, hope that asks uh, answers the question. Florian Benetti asks, "How did you become the drummer that you are today? Did you integrate a music school?" Yes, actually. Uh, um, I had a lot of um, um, yeah, teaching and musical background. Um, the first thing was my, my uh, parents uh, are um, on, on a semi-professional level uh, musicians. So that was the first, um, yeah, the first contact with music. And I had like over 20 teachers, really. Um, I, uh, um, took part in like 60 or, or uh, 60, 70 uh, workshops and I um, yeah, watched at the methods of nearly everybody in the game. And uh, then a lot of YouTube, I always say I, uh, I'm the guy that watched almost every fucking drum video on uh, YouTube, literally. And uh, yeah, so how I became the drummer I am today um, checking out a lot of drummers and music. I, I played um, when I was 16 or till I was 16. I only did uh, orchestral music um, and toured with uh, orchestras like playing timpani and stuff. And, and I uh, could find uh, music I like in that genre. Then I did uh, um, jazz kind of stuff like the uh, Landes Jazz Orchestra in Germany. It's an official jazz orchestra from Germany. Uh, I played there and uh, did a lot of jazz things. Then I studied jazz uh, two years besides my uh, my college degree already. And then I uh, studied pop music design at the Pop Academy in Mannheim. So I did it all and my heart always yeah, beat it for, for uh, metal. Uh, yeah, I was playing like timpani in a church and listening to the new uh, Dimo Borgir uh, CD. So yeah, that's the way I grew as a player, like 
getting all sorts of information and right now with the cover stuff that adds up in this so I, I can easily switch genre and, and adjust what is needed in the in the tracks yeah Jakob Reiterer uh, he's asking um, how to get uh, uh, sponsorships and how to ask them uh, in the first place you have to know if you're doing a deal with anybody uh, they're in, in business that means they want to earn money and nobody in the music business uh, these days um, supports great ideas or you're so such a good player play our stuff you have to have an audience you have to have attention if you don't have attention from anybody that could buy their products uh, they see no use in endorsing you in, in any uh, circumstance so that's the first point if you don't have attention from uh, anybody it's uh, unlikely for or the big brands to endorse you in this uh, at, the, at that point um, so the first thing that uh, I would recommend is work on your content or your skills in the first place yeah improve your content have a, a high output so if you're uh, writing songs write a lot of songs don't write perfect songs write a lot of songs eventually one will be perfect or uh, that uh, that's for any uh, uh, content you're producing produce a lot of it and eventually one or two out of eight or ten will be so great um, but if you spend the time just doing one or two uh, uh, pieces of content in the same amount of time uh, they could be good but most of the time uh, you have that random lucky factor if you're doing 10 in the same time uh, with pressure and a lot uh, uh, and a bit speed that one or two will spike and be really great and most of the time or really big hits could be um, recorded in like 20 minutes a lot of artists uh, tell these stories about their hits uh, it, it was written in five minutes or so so that's the concept like doing a lot of stuff and if you have good content people will follow you so you have attention and with attention the um, the companies recognize you and, and uh, they know they um, get something out of uh, a partnership and they they just want to sell stuff and that's uh, that's the point uh, last question for this episode oh I, I have forgotten uh, who this who asked this random guy I forgot <laughs> the name sorry he's asking um, if you're looking for a label or booking agency uh, what you have to focus on and be aware of the most important thing is that a partnership everybody gets something out of this so uh, with new bands coming up I suggest the first thing for you is to focus on getting attention from fans don't uh, spend your time focusing on getting attention in the business because uh, this connects to the previous um, uh, question the business only cares about money and that's a fact you have to have attention a booking agency they want to earn money if you're a band that uh, plays a show where 10 or 20 people are coming to the show um, they don't earn money with that so there's no um, no use for them in this case and this is where you have to be uh, uh, careful with agencies uh, managements and all those um, those uh, uh, kind of guys the whole music business I'm always saying it spreads out like the the money is the same in the game but uh, there are more pa participants in the game like uh, different genres are coming up everybody uh, needs to have their cut and managements and, and agencies they uh, need to have many artists to survive these days um, back in the days they had like mm, maybe a management had one or uh, a maximum of two or three artists and they worked with them today uh, they don't make en enough money with those acts because uh, it, it flattens out like the, the one or two artists they have 
they don't make enough money with them um, because those artists don't make that much money. The concept with many booking agencies, managements and labels is to have many bands and uh, the poor quantity of bands so that they have many, they're getting the money from them. So if you playing like small shows and, and they are getting a cut like 20 25 percent that's really really high um it's just a numbers game for them they don't uh, care that much about you or uh, they're booking like a little bit or management they can do a little bit for you but uh, they're not as active as the romantic fantasy is uh, these days so i would suggest uh, don't be romantic about someone doing something for you because uh, nowadays that is completely dead. Nobody is doing anything for you. No label, there is no uh, money uh, coming from the label for uh, the artist. You have to produce everything uh, your own. It has to be a, a really high standard, standard and the production, everything needs to be finished uh, as you're entering the door at a label or something. So you have to pay everything in advance to be able to talk to them in the first place. And they're just uh, saying, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, we are taking you. And they uh, uh, give you contracts where they uh, earn money from you, not from the, the, um, the products or the music you're selling, but from you. Like you have to pay for the the CDs they are producing for you and that's a real weird kind of concept and I worked at a label uh, and I I uh, didn't agree with that um, system and I said that's fucked up you're, you're ripping off the artists we can't um, work for all of those they just paying the label for their CDs and they are operated or we could do things for them once a year for like a week or so and the other uh, thousands of weeks <laughs> they're left behind and that totally sucks and I had the conversation and I quit that um, that's it with bookings uh, labels and managements I, I would say the first uh, two years um, be nice and talk to people but don't uh, sign anything Get the attention from the fans in the first place, work on your content, uh, and then eventually you have a position to make good deals. All right, so thank you for watching. This was the first episode of uh, Ask Toby D. Uh, write uh, questions in the comments below and they will be answered uh, from me in the next episode of Ask Toby D. See you guys.